in the moment, and I don't know, do you, I don't know if you get weekly reports, daily reports, how it works in terms of advertising. What are you seeing, even in the last couple of weeks? Is there any difference between what you saw two months ago, a month ago, and the last week or two? Well, the, the key trends in, in advertising, I think one of the interesting elements uh, that we are focused on is how are people re-engaging with the world? And one example is what's going on with retail and commerce. And the way we're looking at it is the world has shifted to this omni-channel where you're living in both the physical world and you're living in the virtual world. Probably one of the most interesting stats in my view is this whole thing about queries around searches near me running shoes right. near me, best breakfast spot near me. That's up 100% year on year. So what we're seeing is merchants and consumers are saying, I want, I want to be able to transact. They're looking, maybe starting their search online, maybe starting it in a store, but ending it in the other place. So trying to make sure for all of us that we're right. straddling this online world and physical world is a key part of the... What about all these advertisers? I mean, there were a lot of companies that actually were built or grew up during the pandemic, oddly enough, in the last two years, maybe even with stimulus money and other money that came in. Are you concerned about that money falling out, meaning those companies having to pull back? I think it's sort of reasonable startup crew. to assume, right to your first question about, obviously, we, we're part of a broader right. ecosystem, and so we need to be mindful of how this evolves. And so um, we're, we're watching it like everybody else. Um, let me ask you a free speech question or, or a content moderation question. I think everybody's trying to grapple with this issue. And one of the most interesting things that's happening right now is we had this you know, tragic shooting in Buffalo, but there have been tragic shootings all over. But this one in particular was interesting insofar as it went up on Twitch, was taken down. Other people tried to put it on other sites. Folks like you and others tried to take them down as quickly as possible. And yet we now have a law in Texas, for example, which I know uh, your company and others are going to the Supreme Court to object to, this, that would have forced a company like yours to keep that up in a state like Texas. H how do you grapple with these, these new laws and what do you think, how do you think this all resolves itself if it does at all? Well, attacking disinformation or in that is anything that incites violence, we've got a tremendous investment and team around it, people and machine learning to block it, take it down. Right. The whole point is how do you elevate authoritative information? How do you reward authoritative information? And you need to put structure and governance around it, which is what we've been doing. And so I think it's absolutely critical that you have the ability to move with speed when you see something, if you haven't already been able to block it, to pull it down. And right. that is one of the critical elements. You saw that in Russia. as you know, That's another important area where we had the ability to bring down disinformation and actually to keep up elements that, um, that were key and, and invaluable. And so that ability to move and the investment behind it, we think, is a core part of delivering on what is it that people expect right. of us. But, but, but what do you make of this moment we're in where you have states like Texas? And by the way, I don't know what Elon Musk would actually say about this, but he wants to turn Twitter into a completely uncensored environment, at least a relatively uncensored environment. That's what he says. But in a state like Texas, taking things down would be illegal. So I think that one of the critical elements in everything we do on regulation is you need to constructively engage with regulators because it's really key to go through, so what are the unintended consequences? Right. You and I have talked about that in the context of financial services, and it's very clear. If you can be specific and, and explicit and work with regulators, I think that they, too, want to land things in the best interest of safety, security. And so that's what we're looking right. at doing on both sides of the Atlantic.